For this video, these are the measurements you will need. I am also linking a download of these measurements that you can print out and type yours in to make it a little bit easier when you do this pattern. Let's get going. All right, so today I'm going to walk you through a really basic bodice. So this is the type of bodice that you would use for um, like drafting a t-shirt or something like that. It's not going to be very fitted. It's just going to be a very, very basic bodice. Um, so what we are going to do first is start a new pattern. So we have to say new. And this first, let's just say bodice. Okay. And this gives us a pattern. Now I'm going to use my daughter's measurements, which I already put into the measurements file. If you do not know how to do a measurements file and would like to use one, I can link the video for that here. Um, otherwise, you can just manually, manually put all your measurements in as well. But if you have a measurements file you want, you hit measurements, and then you hit load individual. And I'm going to put Isabel basic shirt open, and it's ready to go. So our first measurement is going to be our waist circumference. We're going to mostly use this point at distance and angle for most of everything. So we're going to start with that. We're going to grab this first point. This red circle is where we have to start. And we're going to drag it to the right. And the angle is going to be 0 degrees. F of X will allow me to put in my daughter's measurements. So in this measurements, these are all the measurements I already put in for her. So all I have to do is search for waist, waist circumference. Now I don't want the whole thing. I just want the front half of her body. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to put divided by 4. Because divided by 2 would be the front of her body, but I'm only going to do the right side. Hit OK. If you don't have a measurements file, you could just type in the measurement here, and that works as well. OK. I'm going to hit zoom fit best so we can see this. You can also hit control and roll your scroller backwards or forwards, and that will zoom in and out for you. But that way we can see what we're doing. All right, so now we're going to do, um, and we're going to go down. So this is our waist mark. We're going to go down to the high hip. So I'm going to grab that point again and come down. My angle's 270. My length, you can either type it in or waist to high hip. You have to click it twice to get it to go into your formula. OK, OK, and there it is. Now, this is our high hip. If you want, you can relabel that point high hip, and it'll say that instead. And we could relabel this point waist. And it'll say that instead. That way, you can see what's going on a little bit better. Um, it can be helpful. If you don't want to, you don't have to, though. All right, let's keep going. So now we're going to go down to the hip line, just in case you want this to be a really long t-shirt. So again, point A will go straight down, change that angle to 270 degrees. And we want this to be the hip, so waist to hip. Okay, okay, and there it is. Same thing, we're going to come over for both of those. The angle is now zero. The length is the hip circumference divided by four. Okay, okay, we're going to do the same thing for the high hip. Come to the right. Angle is zero. The length, delete everything that's already in the formula up here. And we're going to go to high hip circumference divided by four. Okay, I'm going to hit save. I like to save every once in a while to um, make sure I don't lose any of my work. And we're just going to call this basic T bodice example. There we go. All right, so from the high hip and the hip, now we're going to start doing the top half. The bottom of this T is basically already done. So we're going to start working our way up from the waist now. So let's grab point A and go straight up. 90 degrees, and our length is from the waist to the bust. Okay, let's zoom out just a little. And then we're going to bring that to the right, zero degrees, and the length is the bust circumference divided by four. There we go. All right, so now we're going to go to above bust or um, to the armpit measurement. Starting at waist, we'll go up. Angle is 90, and the length is, I think it's high bust in here. Let 
Maybe it is above bust. Let's just type bust and see what we find. <laughs> High bust. There we go. Okay. All right, I'm going to relabel this real quick. And I'm just over here, point label. Let's call this the bust, just so we can see what's going on again a little bit better. All right, so now this is that point of the high bust, and I want to, or above bust, I want to square this off with the bust. Since this is a really basic, basic t-shirt style bodice, I'm not worried about adding darts and curves and things. Um, so the above bust is always going to be smaller than the bust, so we're just not even going to measure it. So grab the um, point of X and Y from two other points. It's like this boxing out tool. And we're going to start out here on the bust. Just hit that bust point. And then we're going to hit this A6, that high bust point. And that gives us that. So this is where the armpit hole starts, basically. Or your arms, your sleeve hole will start there. All right, we're going to keep working our way up. So grab that, um, draw a line from a point. So grab point A, straight up. Again, the angle is 90 degrees. And this is from the waist to the neck now, to the front of the neck. So neck front to waist. Let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit again. Actually, I'll keep this zoomed in a little and just scroll up. All right, so this is the neck. Let's go ahead and label it neck, front. There we go. All right, so now we need to come over the width of the neck. So grab that point, neck, front, straight to the right, which is zero degrees for the angle. The length is neck, width, divided by two. Okay. And I'm just going to leave that A7. You can rename it if you'd like to. All right, so now I need to square this off with the waist. So I'm going to grab the squaring off tool again. Grab that side of the neck and bring it down to the waist. And that gives us this point directly down. So now I want to start at that point we just made down here and go straight up at 90 degrees. And for the length of this one, this is going to be the neck side to waist. Okay, and there we have the neck side. So now we need the length of the shoulder, so that neck side comes straight to the right. The angle is going to be zero unless you know the angle that you want to use for the shoulder measurement. If you know the angle you want, you can go ahead and type it in there. But otherwise, I'm going to do it this way if you don't know the angle. So I'm going to go shoulder length, okay, zero degrees. So this is our shoulder now. But now in the shoulder, go straight across like that. Again, if you know the angle, type it in. Otherwise, what we're going to do is square off that shoulder with the waist, okay? And actually, for my daughter, it's just about the exact same as her waist. And then grab this point up and go straight up at 90 degrees. And for the length, it's going to be shoulder to waist. Shoulder tip to waist side is what I put in mine. Okay. So now we can connect those two points, and that is the angle that her shoulder curves around her neck. So instead of point now, we're going to go down to line. Just visually, it's helpful to see this. So line between points, and we're just going to connect the shoulder to the edge of the shoulder. And that's it. I'm going to hit save real quick so I don't lose anything. It does auto-save like every minute, <laughs> but I just like to be in the habit of saving kind of often because when I get going really fast, I can do quite a bit in a minute. I do believe in um, your preferences. You can change how often it auto-saves auto itself, but I just try to keep up and save it from time to time. All right, so we have where our neck and our shoulder. So all we have to do now is basically points for the armhole, and we can start drafting this out. So now we need to get a point halfway between the neck front and above bust. So we can use this point down here, midpoint between two points. Click on neck front on this above bust point. It's already divided it by two, so I can just hit enter. All right, and now we have an across the chest measurement, so I'm going to go straight to the right, which is, again, zero degrees, and the length is across chest. But 
divided by two because I don't need the full chest length, just half. Okay, okay, and there we go. So to do the armhole and the neck, let's go ahead and start with the neck. Let's hit curve, and I am going to grab this curve based off four points right here. Curve tool, which uses points as control. So I'm going to start at the neck front. You always want to work in a clockwise direction. So I'm going to start at the left and work my way to the right and up. So I'm going to click on neck front once. This in-between point that squares is off A7, I'm going to click that twice. And then I'm going to hit A9. And we have a really curved neck. Now, I could click that and delete it. If you don't want it quite that curved, I can grab this halfway between tool, midpoint between, hit A7 and neck front, and I just want to see where that point's going to hit. Let's hit apply. Let's try that. Alright, so now curve. Let's do the same thing, but we're going to hit neck front, that point we just made, A7, and then to the top, and that's a much more flattering neck curve that's going to fold around the body better. We're going to save that. All right, so now we're going to do the armhole curve. So this point across chest that I took, this needs to come through that point before it goes down to the bust. So there's a few different things we can do to make this happen. You sort of have to eyeball this part a little bit. You could just grab simple curve here and grab the top of the shoulder and the bottom of the shoulder and then just grab onto it, if it'll let you here. There we go. And you could just start manipulating based off these two circles here to make it hit that point. Okay? So how you do this is up to you. All right, so that would be appropriate. I could do that. If you don't want to do it that way, you could also grab these points off the other point. What I would do then is square off this point with the above bust point and start making my curve from there. So this one with the four points, and I would probably go one, two, three, four, but then it doesn't quite hit that point. So again, you would just start have to have to start manipulating things a little bit. We could delete that, and then we could. Um, even just grab this line point and just straight connect that. And then we could draw a line coming down a little further. Let's just say an inch. And our angle would be angle of line. Delete this. Do it the angle of A12 to A14. Okay, okay. Now we could make a curve based off of that. Okay, so however you want to create that curve is fine. Um, if you're going to use this pattern for multiple people, I would do something like this that I just did because I could change other measurements and these curves will still connect through that point exactly. If you want to go, I think the simple curve is a much easier way of doing it and then you can really adjust that line to look exactly how you want it to. Um, but then just keep in mind, if you change the person's measurements that you're putting in, you need to go back and adjust that curve to make sure it's still hitting through this point here. Um, for things like this, you could even change the color of the line to remind you to come back and edit that point if that's something you need to do. All right, so we'll just go ahead and leave that as is. I'm going to save it really quick. All we have to do now is that back neck point because this is the front because this is a really really basic t-shirt bodice the front and back are going to be the same other than the neck hole so go ahead and grab that point grab from the waist go straight up angle is 90 and the length let's go neck and this is neck back to waist okay and on my daughter it's literally the same height for her um, so what you could do, you could draw a line straight across, and that's fine. It seems kind of goofy when you're doing that, but it will fit as long as your measurements are correct. Um, otherwise, you could also drop it about half an inch if that bothers you, and the collar will take care of it, and that's okay too.
The next thing we're going to do is the sleeve. So I need to hit this new pattern piece button, and we'll call this sleeve. Just hit enter or hit OK. I'm going to zoom fit best so I can see what's going on. And I want to just be able to see this portion up here. So I'm going to click point B. That's where our new pattern piece starts. And these X and Y over here, we can move where it is. I'm going to move it over a little, but I'm also going to move it up. That way I can really see what I'm doing. All right, also if you want, you could mirror this whole front pattern to the other side. I typically just do the one side and then cut on the fold or trace it under another paper and tape it together, but you could totally mirror this over to the other side and have a whole pattern piece. The reason I only do quarters is for one thing, I draw all of mine off the center line anyway, so it makes sense to do quarters and it's pretty easy to cut on a fold. But also my printer is a 24 inch roll, so if I keep things in quarters, typically I can print everything out in one piece and not have to do anything else to it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start the sleeve. So first, I'm going to get my sleeve length from the shoulder. So I'm gonna draw a line straight And I want, I think I wrote something in here about t-shirt. Um, sleeve, there we go, shoulder to short sleeve. And that's my length at 90 degrees, okay? So then I need to find a cross from the shoulder to the above plus point. I need to know that length. So how I'll do that, I'll go back into the bodice and I'm going to draw a line, line between points from the shoulder to this above bust point. You can hit this one that um, we squared them out from. Or you can go straight to the actual above bust point, whichever one honestly is fine. All right, so then we'll go back to the sleeve. We're going to scroll out a little so I can see that still. I'm going to grab this point, and I'm going to go to the right angle should be zero and the length I'm gonna to go to length of lines and I want it to be from the shoulder to above bust so a12 to a5 a12 to a5 okay okay and I need that to go both directions so 180 goes the other direction Thing. There we go. All right, so now we need to go from this above bust point that we squared off with our across the chest to this above bust point so that we basically know the width of this curve. So again, I'm going to go back to the bodice, I'm going to go to line, and I'm going to connect this above bust to that above bust. So A16 to A5. So now that line is in here, I can go back to the sleeve. I'm going to zoom out again so I can see this. And I am going to go from, so I'm going to draw on this vertical line. So I'm going to grab this one point at distance along the line because I want it to stay on that line. I'm going to start at the top and at the bottom. And the length, I want it to be A16 to A5. So length of line, A16 to A5. Okay, okay, and there we go. All right, so that tells me that my sleeve head needs to happen within that space. So I can square off the bottom of this. So I'm going to square this off from there and from there. So this measurement across gives me this measurement on each side of the sleeve. And across the sleeve, it's going to go up this direction one time at the top. So that's this direction here from B1 to B4. So now I need to start connecting all of that into a sleeve cap. All right, so as with any curve, there's two ways to do it. We can just grab these two points and we can start adjusting with these little circles. And you can just kind of mess with it until you have a sleeve cap. And that's totally fine if you just want to eyeball it and do it that way. 
Um, or if you want to grab these four points so that it auto adjusts itself depending on your measurements, then we need to add a couple points in here. So go to point, we're going to do this halfway, midway between two points a couple times. So we are going to start on this outer edge, come back to the center, and we're going to divide it by two. And then we're going to do it again, and this time divide it by three. And we're going to do it on the other side as well. So outside to inside, divided by 2. Outside to inside, divided by 3. We're going to square those points off to the top. And we're going to square the outer points to this bottom part. Okay, so these outside points are squared to these sleeve ends, and the inside points, the divided by twos, are squared off to that top of the sleeve head. And now we're going to connect them. So we're going to start at the center, and we're going to go one, two, three, four. Okay? We're going to do that again on the other side, again clockwise. So we're going to start at the outside this time. One, two, three, four. And there we have a sleeve head. And I'm going to save that. And then we, if you want visually to see it, you can connect these points. Ta -da, ta -da. And there you have it. You have a sleeve. I'm going to save that. Okay. Again, if you're not super happy with this or want to change it at all, feel free to mess with your points or use that other curve that you can really visually mess with it. It's completely up to you on this. Um, because this is a really basic bodice, there's not a lot of math or science going into this at this point. Um, so it just kind of is what it is. If you would like at this point to check to make sure this is wide enough for your bicep, which it should be, um, all you want to do is go to point and we're going to point at distance and angle from B, go straight out, angle is zero, and the length would be your arm circumference or bust, or not bust, bicep, whatever you put in, um, and it's going to be divided by two. And there we have, see this is a good double check, because this point comes out further than the sleeve does, so we need to make this wider. So what we're going to do it's just a little bit of math here. So we need to find the distance between B15 and B2. So B15, we're going to draw a new line out there to connect. So this one line between, connect B2 to B15. All right, and we are going to, because we want this bottom part to come out that much extra, this top part can come down. You could just box this out like this and just extend the sleeve head if you want. Or you could bring this down a little bit and extend that out. If you want to bring this down an equal amount to how much you're extending it out, you would draw a point from this line here up to the top at the length of B2 to B15. So that you would redo all these points up to that line and your sleeve would start shorter and come out further. Or, once again, you can just square it out to that point. And I'm going to go ahead and draw a point out this way at 180 degrees, just at the length of B2 to B15. And square that out and it can be that easy as well again if you want you can connect all those lines at that point so that visually you can see your sleeve happening 
All right, so now we also have to do the neckline. So we're going to hit new pattern piece, and let's just call this neckline. Okay, zoom fit best. And now i got to really look for a second and figure out, see, yes, I see the red dot way down here. You can just grab that red point and drag it around if you want. Again, otherwise you can mess with it with these X and Y buttons. If you genuinely cannot find that point, just type 0 and 0 here, and it'll line it up with point A. Okay? But obviously you don't want it to stay there. All right, so we'll do the neckline. Let's type the neckline up here so we can zoom in on the neck while we work. There we go. So now the neckline is going to be by the neck so I can see what's happening. And what I need to do is I need the length of all these curves. Now, if your back neck curved, you can curve it just like the front neck. Okay, my daughter is kind of squared off at that point. So hers coming straight across, which is okay. Um, so I'm going to use that line and the curve of the front neck. So I'll go to point. We're going to go come straight to the right from point C. The angle is zero. The length is going to be a few things. Make sure you can see all these points in here, okay? So we're going to delete what's in there. We're going to do length of curve. And we need neck front to nine, which is this. And I'm going to put this in parentheses times two, because this is one side of the neck, but I also need this other side of the neck, plus the back. So parentheses, the back for me is a line. It could be a curve for you, depending on um, what your measurements were. So length of line, I need 18 to 9, or yours might be a curve of neck back to 9. There we go. Again, this is also times two, because this is half of the back of her neck, and I need the whole thing. And I'm just going to hit OK, OK. That is now my neckline, and I want that to come down, so we'll come from the first point straight down, and I want that to be 0.75 inches, 270. This length depends on how wide of a band you want on your t-shirt, um, so if you want it to be, without your seam allowance, if you want it to be um, half an inch showing, it needs to be an inch long. If you want it to be a quarter of an inch showing, it needs to be 0.25 inches long. If you want it to be, let's say, um, let's say three quarters of an inch, because again, you were folding it over, that would be one and a half inches. If you want to add your seam allowance in here, which I do actually like to do, then this would be. It's just going to be however thick you want this collar to be. So let's say 0.75 inches. We folded it over, so times 2 plus your seam allowance, which also needs to be times 2 because you're folding it in half. So for me, I typically like to do a half inch seam allowance. If you have a different seam allowance, put yours in. So mine would need to be 2.5 inches. Um, you could do all of this times two at once if you want. So you could just be like, I want a half inch seam allowance or half an inch of the neckline showing. And I do a half inch seam allowance and we folded it over so times two and then it'd be a two inch. However you want to do that is fine, but just so that you understand how that process works, um, that's all it is. So let's go ahead and add the seam allowance. Um, there we go. And I am going to move this whole thing up a little bit here. And then I'm going to square that off. Okay. And again, if you want to connect those lines so that visually you can see what's happening, that's fine. On the neck, if this is an actual t-shirt with stretchy fabric, we do not add seam allowance to the horizontal. Because we want this to be pulled out a little bit while we are sewing it around the neck. So I do not add seam allowance so that it can sew around the neck appropriately. All right, I'm going to hit save. All right, so now what we want to do is connect this front on the bodice, and then we're going to start adding in our allowances for movement. So on a basic t-shirt, we're going to square it out on our widest point wherever we want this to end. So for my daughter, that would be her hip. 
So I'm going to square out. If you want it to go down to your bottom hip, that's fine. Um, if you want a really long t-shirt, I have the measurement in there just in case I ever want it. But I'm going to go for her high hip to that above bust line. And actually, I am incorrect. I'm going to delete that. Her above bust comes out further. So I'm going to start at the above bust line and come down to the high hip. So now I'm squared out. And now I am going to connect those just so visually I can see what's happening and also to make sure none of the points are on the outside of that. Everything is on the inside of this line, meaning that there's not going to be a part on this t-shirt that's really, really tight on her and fits uncomfortably. All right, so at this point, for t-shirts, most people don't want t-shirts to be skin tight, so we need to add some ease. How much is totally up to you. Personally, I recommend half an inch on each side. And you only need to add this to the fullest measurement since we squared it off. So we squared it off of this above bust point, which is just connected to the bust. So if I put at the end of this um, bust circumference divided by four, if I put plus 0.5, the whole thing comes to the right, and I hope you saw that even the sleeve adjusted that. I'll do it one more time so you can see that everything adjusted to it, every single measurement, because we've based everything off of this first piece. All right, so now there'll be enough movement in there for her to move around in her t-shirt. Um, you also need to do this to the sleeve. So let's go to the sleeve, and we can zoom out a little bit. On this measurement with our upper arm circumference, I don't want this to be that tight on her upper arm. So I'm going to add, again, at least a half inch here. On a t-shirt, you could definitely go up to like an inch on this for comfort. But we're going to go ahead and expand that as well. And that way we know it's got enough width in there. And when we actually sew this on, you'll see when we sew it, it might come out a little bit. And that's okay. But she's going to have enough room to move around in this a little bit. All right. So now we need to put this into a pattern, but before we do, if you want, you can create a V-neck off of this too, because as you can see right now, this is a curved neckline. If you'd like to make this a V-neck, all you're going to do, and I'm on the wrong piece, is decide how deep you want it to go and connect those points. So let's grab a curve, and let's just say we want it to be here, one, two, three, four, and now we have a v-neck. It's that simple. You can just draw your shape off of it. But looking at that, it's a little bit too steep. So I'm going to go to my point, and I am going to... Let's grab halfway between those two. And let's try that curve again. There we go. That already looks better. All right, so now we've got a curved out v-neck. I'm going to show you in the next video how to add all of this to your details so that you can actually print it as a pattern. Um, but otherwise, hopefully this all made sense. If you have any questions on how to do this basic tee, please comment below so that I can explain in further detail. Otherwise, I will be posting a video next on how to actually print this out as a pattern and how to sew it together. Thanks for watching. Bye.